This year, the manga Hell's Paradise created by Yuji Kaku finally got its anime adaptation released, completing the start of the Dark Shonen Trio anime era. There was a lot of hype within the manga community about the announcement in 2021, which led to me picking it up myself ahead of its release since it's already completed with 127 chapters. And let's just say I played myself with that thought process because it was a lot. On pages alone, it's definitely longer than Chainsaw Man right now. If you still can't fathom that, read the first 10 chapters. It is densely packed to say the least, but I managed to read it to the end and had a blast. Looking forward to how the anime adaptation was gonna look. And with one more episode left at the time of recording, I thought it'd be a good time to talk about it. Once I've briefly gone through the show's plot, characters and power system, I'll be talking about what kind of state the anime seems to be in right now. Set in the Edo period, a group of death row convicts are offered the chance to be pardoned by the shogunate of Japan, in exchange for going to a mysterious island to find the rumoured elixir of life. Each criminal is assigned to an Asaimon of the Yamada clan, who are skilled practitioners of execution. The show centres around Gabimar of the Hollow and Asaimon Sagiri. They both have inner demons they are forced to overcome as they battle through the many dangers of the island, including the other convicts and the supernatural elements that resulted in five expedition teams previously going to and no one making it out alive. The story lets us know early on that if they can come to terms with who they truly are as a person, and the reality of life itself, they tap into a power that is later described as Tao. I could go into what that is and how it's part of the power system, but honestly, it's worthy of its own video. The best way I can sum it up is, it is more complicated than Jujutsu Kaisen, has a lot of religion representation like Naruto, but implements them more into the story and character development throughout their journeys. I'm not going to go over who the other characters are in the story, but I do believe they and the main characters are the best aspect of the story. The plot itself is a rather simple one, centred around one time point and main objective, unlike JJK and Chainsaw Man, where their stories unravel over a prolonged period of time. The number of characters in Hell's Paradise introduced and progress through the start of the story is also a lot larger, helping it stick out as one of its own dark shonen rather than a carbon copy to either of the other two. The quality is... good. I don't want to say that toxic M word because that's the most offensive word you could use to describe someone's favourite anime or manga. In short, the show's quality range is deceivingly high. See, one time you'll see this. But you'll eventually see shots like this. When you're actively looking out for it. But on another day, you'll catch me even say it's very good. But the show is under MAPPA. You know, the studio that has Vinland Saga, JJK and Chainsaw Man under their belt. This show didn't get as much love in the talent display department. Especially when considering the term Dark Shonen Trio getting thrown around. And to be honest, that's okay. Sort of. Look, you don't put effort in every hour of your life in everything you do. For instance, a gym goer does not test his one rep max on various exercises in every single session. Just like how a company doesn't put all their talented personnel in all of their available projects. They put who they think are the right people for the right job across a number of projects throughout the year. With budget, time and resources being only a few factors that they have to consider over time. We know which one of these are not high on the priority list. When it comes down to it, and with MAPPA having Chainsaw Man and Season 2 of JJK released within a 12 month period, many people are convinced that they skimped out on resources for Hell's Paradise in favour of the other two shows. Probably because they want to maximise the potential reception of their two most anticipated shonen anime. Even if it's at the risk of capping potential revenue from another anime based on an already completed manga. This is also without mentioning any metrics that any studio uses to choose the manga that they want to adapt. 
See, the Dark Shonen Trio mangas all started in 2018. JJK was the first to have an announcement about an anime in November 2019, followed by Chainsaw Man with an announcement at December 2020. Then Hell's Paradise got its anime announcement December 2021. Come end of 2020, Jujutsu Kaisen sold 6 million manga copies, then over 30 million in 2021. Chainsaw Man in 2020 sold over 2 million copies, then 5 million in the following year. Hell's Paradise sold over 1 million in 2020, but by 2022, over 4 million were sold. It's also worth noting that Hell's Paradise manga debuted first out of the three. So as you can see, manga sales typically blow up after the announcement of an anime. So it's no secret that studios take a look at the same metrics for unadapted manga when they know their involvement can create the momentum within the community. They will have easy access to this and other figures, typically via liaison work from the producers of the studio, publishers of the manga, and any sponsors, with a bidding war or two occurring if there are multiple parties contesting for the source material. This is all speculation about decision Mapper thought about nearly three years ago, before things were drawn up. Though, there is one decision Mapper went with, making one big show ultimately lose out on for now. See, Wataru Kawagoi is the Hell's Paradise animation producer. The person ensures that everyone involved in the project is doing their bit, is also doing the job for Attack on Titan. And for those of you who don't know, that's currently being delayed. The show has come of its issues, one of them being that they were previously dropped by Wit Studio. How much of a problem this decision will cause, we'll find out later when all of the show's finished. For now, I see it as a calculated risk that Mappa took, with the delay being the contingency to combat the issue. And to be honest, that's better than releasing something they know is gonna be a Studio Mappa 2023 equivalent of Berserk 2016 anime. For the sake of meeting a deadline, but going back to Hell's Paradise, there is one more episode yet to be released at the time of editing the video, therefore leaving fans hoping that Wataru Kawagoe and animation director Kaori Makita have left the show's best work for the season finale. Despite it not being on the same level as its contemporaries, the show is very good at hiding its lack of strong animation. Once you actively look for the inconsistencies, it's up to you whether that ruins the show for you. A good watch without having to lower your expectations of what good quality anime is. It's just a shame that Mappa didn't give Hell's Paradise the same playing field that the JJK and Chainsaw Man teams were working with. So, if you made it this far, thanks for watching my first video. Let me know down in the comments if you think the final episode will change any unhappy opinions on the show. If you have watched the final episode, leave a comment too. Give me any ideas or criticisms on the video. Tell me anything I messed up or missed out on. Subscribe and support black businesses. Roll safe.